All right, little drummer boy, are you ready? This is one of my favorite Christmas songs and always has been. I have some of my earliest memories of being emotionally affected by music was to this song. It's a very early memory. I don't know what it was, but it just, it just resonated at the time. I just loved it as a boy. And it is still one of my favorite Christmas songs. So in this video, we will be digging into how to play this. If you would like to get the music that we're using in this one, you're welcome to find the link below and you'll get a book of 30 pieces arranged for solo guitar, Christmas tunes, holiday tunes, mostly in the Anglo tradition, but also some Hispanic and, and Jewish traditions as well in there. So it's got tabs and it's got notation and if there's also a notation only version if you'd prefer that as well. It's also got chords and lyrics if you just wanna strum and carol with it. So with that said, first off, let me just play it for you and then we'll dive in. All right, so that was an abbreviated version. I didn't do the entire version that is in this sheet music. I just kind of did the main sections for you. And then from that, we can put together the entire arrangement here in this video. So first off, first things first, let's just zoom out and look at all the pages all at once. Now with this piece, with the tab, there are six pages. And so what do you even do whenever you see a piece of music that has six pages on it, how do you even get into that? And so I will tell you. So first off, you can just glance at it and see what you see. Look for any defining features, look for different sections that look different. Just glancing over this, I don't see anything really different from one page to the next. I mean, there's a, the beginning, you can see that there's an intro here that's a little bit different than the other stuff. But other than that, it looks pretty similar all the way through. Now I know this is very small on your, on your screen, but don't worry, we'll zoom in in a minute. The main thing that you wanna look for at this point, since there's nothing really glaring, is sections. Is how do I break this into smaller chunks? Because six pages is too much to get into. And with a song like this, you know that there are verses, you know how the song goes. Parum pa pum pum. And so then how can we break this into those sections? And for this, I have given it to you with these blocks right here. This says intro, this says verse, and then we can go over, where does it go to? Up, oh, here's a little interlude right there, and then we go into another verse. So that's how we can see. Another way to look for this musically is for double bar lines, and you can't see it because this it's too small on your screen, but right here, there's two white, there's two lines, not thick ones like at the very end over here, but, 
but there's two lines and that way you can also see your section endings for that as well. So let's just call this the first verse. This will be a big one right over here. And then we will have an interlude and then we have the second verse. There's our big two. That goes all the way to right here. Then we have another interlude and then we have the third verse, which is right here. So three verses with a couple of in little interludes between them is the basic form. So whenever we're working on it, that's how we'll work on it. We'll think about those as discrete sections and that way our mind can actually grab onto this and we know where we are in the piece. So with that, let's just jump right into the first section. So let's start with the first verse. That first intro is just some long notes in the, in the bass. So let's start with the very first verse. And so let me first just play this for you, just a couple, just to get this going we have. That's the first line. So if you know how this goes, if you know how the piece sounds, which you do because that's why you're learning it, then you'll know that we have some repeated material here. Different words maybe, but repeated material. So the first line is actually exactly like the second line with a little bit of rhythmic variation. So we, in the second line, we change the rhythm just a little bit, right? But it's very similar to the first line. So then at measure 13, right down here, then we play a very similar thing. It sounds similar, but it's a, it's in different notes. And then that happens again. Then we do something different, and this is this section. Then, so that's that up to this point. Then we do the first section again. So this going forward from here is very much like the beginning over here. It's a little bit different because we, we kind of close it differently, but it's very similar. And then we just have this little tag. So now that we know what's going on, it's like first thing, first thing, a little bit different, different thing, first thing again. So like A, A, B, A is the, is the basic form of this little, little section here, this verse. So before we get into it, let's talk about the right hand for just a minute. So with the right hand, we are, we have the thumb playing these bass notes, right? And then we have single notes and we have double notes. And with this song, you can play with whatever fingers you would like to play with. Usually on the top strings, you're gonna play with the fingers and not the thumb because oftentimes too, it just, they play together and so you can't. And so do that. If you'd like to, right hand technique is a whole thing unto itself, but just a quick tip is keep the big knuckles over the strings that are playing with the fingers and push through the strings instead of pulling up on them like this and you're gonna get a richer sound. You just kind of push through them. Be, be a little bit loose in there and just push through them. And so you might just practice doing this before you actually jump in just to get the basic movements. So that's a very, very short right hand lesson, but it's a place to start anyway. So with that then, let's look at this first line. So we have a rhythm here, right? We have notes and we have rhythm. And the rhythm, luckily, you know because you know how to sing the song. And so when you're playing these notes, it's really important that you sing along as you play. Because if you don't, then it's not gonna sound right because anybody that hears you will be singing along as you, as you play it. And so you should also sing along and that will take care of a lot of your timing and a lot of your, uh, just your, your musicality and everything else. Because if you just listen to it, then you know how it goes. 
right? So, so here we have, I'll just write it out for you, one and two and one and two and triplet or one triplet, one triplet, two, and one and two and. And so then this is how you would count that. One and two and one and two and triple two and one and two and triplets are a whole thing unto themselves and so the main thing is that you think the big beat and the big beat is boom 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 so boom they told him pa rum pum 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 rum pum 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 make it work in there but be thinking the big beat da 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 dum boom Boom, da, 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 da. So don't get hung up too much on it. Just, just fit them in there and be thinking, boom, the big beat. Because it is a drum song after all. So be thinking the big beat. All right, so let me just play this for you and then we'll talk a little bit about the, the left hand. So one and two and one and two. So that's it. Notice my hand and how I'm using my hand. So don't glue your the big knuckle right here. Don't glue it to the side of the guitar or anything like that. It's gonna make it more difficult for you. Instead, give it some space. Let this part of the hand be parallel underneath. And then, and if you would like to, you can just practice leaving that finger down and then just playing these notes. That, that are used. You can just look at the notes, be at the tab or the notation and just, just play them and just make sure that you can get a nice tunnel for everything and you don't mute anything out. Be right on the tips is very nice, curved fingers. If any finger is particularly straight, take notice of that and say, does it have to be straight? All right. So then going to the next line, we have very similar, just different rhythm. So now we go up to D, open fourth string. And this rhythm, so if you'll notice your notes here, just play with your notes. So those are your notes. A little bit different rhythm right here. So instead of the triplets, we're saying we're playing 16th notes. And so here it's, you would count that one E and a, but this, you don't have to know that to, to actually play the song. Uh, if you do it along with the lyrics, just to how it is in your head, it'll sound great. Um, we count that, but it would be, just to do it, this measure would be, or the whole line would be, one and two and one and two and one E and a two and one and two and. So if you'd like to clap and count it, then good on you, but you can also just sing it along and do it that way. Now I'll point something out with this line in D right here, measure 13. You can leave your second finger on the whole time. So you can just leave it on the entire time. Then you're just moving around notes on top of it. So just let that one hold down, make a nice tunnel with it so it's not muting anything. And then you can just dance on top of it. Moving then to this line at line 17. Play this one for you. Now these two measures are exactly like measures 13 and 14, exactly the same. So you've already done that good work. Now we go into something different. At this point, we need to rotate the hand. Watch. Now we need to get here. This is a bar. So to do this bar chord, we wanna drop the elbow a little bit and extend the first finger. 
it could play on the side of the first finger. So kind of you're kind of leaning back onto the note like that. If this is tricky for you, then just play the top note and that's fine. So the bar and then the open strings and then coming down with the two and the four into the, the D, the third fret, second string, and then the second fret of the third string. I'm a little bit out of tune, sorry. And then, and then into a C shape, C chord. As you play this, your first finger, because it's here and here, can hold. And then, next line, back to G. So, it's kind of a big stretch, third and fourth finger here. And then back to our D shape. And so that's that whole line right there. Great, so we are now to this last little bit. And it's very similar to the very first section. So I'll just play it for you. We've got a different open D in there, but it's very similar. And then, A, G, A, G. And then that is the whole entire section. So we have four different little subsections within this larger section, within this verse. We've got the first line, second line, third line, fourth line, right? Or fourth bit, I should say. We've got the first and second lines, which are kind of a repeated thing, right? The first line and then the first line again, a little bit different rhythm. Then we go into the second half of it, and then we come back to the first part again. Great chapter heading. Now we're going to verse two. So with verse two, here's a little freebie for you. It is exactly the same as verse one, but we're just gonna add a few extra bass notes. That's all that it is. So if we look at this, it is pretty much the same. Very few has, very little has changed. So I'll just play it for you. And so then that way you can go through if you'd like. So very similar, but we're just adding in this bass line. So as you're doing this, you can notice exactly where it lines up with the with the what you've already been playing. Here's another tip as you add this in. First off, just add in the half notes. That's the big beat for every beat. That's just boom, boom. And just ignore these little eighth notes over here just skip them at first. And that way you've just got, first off, and just get into that, boom. So you just get into that rhythm of playing that and just dropping that bass line in there and get used to that first. Then come back as a next step and then put in the put in the little eighth notes. Here's a little style tip for you if you would like to. 
and you've got it in your, your hands to do that. As a general musical rule, repeated notes like to get louder. It just drives it forward so that each note isn't just this static thing. Instead, we can just kind of think about them moving forward. And so then that means you start the first one a little bit quieter and then you get louder. We use a ramp for that. So each little one starts quiet and gets louder. And so that's a little technical issue for you. If you'd like to, it's not necessary. Boom, boom, boom. So you can try it if you'd like to. Something to listen for if you would like to, but purely and only if you'd like to. All right, verse three, chapter heading, verse three. Verse three is spread across three pages in this tab version. And so I have left the copyright marks in here to show you where the, where the page breaks are. But this is one of the challenges of working with these big, with these big long scores like that, because it can get difficult to look at when you're working on it. So I put them all on one page here. So first off, as you're doing this, if you'll notice, if we just go ahead and notice, we keep the bass line from the second verse. Boom, 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 boom. So that's continuing to go forward. Again, when you're first learning it, you can skip that and play it like the first verse, or like we talked about, just skip those eighth notes and then just drop in the big beat, like two big beats per measure. All right, so I'm going to, before we talk about this or anything, I'm just going to play it here. We'll talk about the interlude that got us here in, after, after this. So here we go. So that section right there, we're just outlining a D chord here, right? Like Tom Petty Free Fallen. It's, if, if you know that song. So it's the D chord with these top notes in a particular rhythm. And then going to the third line here, starting here, we go to an A. And this is where things get a little bit hairy. Little bar. Fifth fret. We'll talk about that in a second. back to the D part again from the beginning of the section. So let's talk about going up here to this nether regions up to the fifth fret here. So here, we're at measure 73 down here. Going slow through here. Bar. Now as you bar, notice where my elbow is. Notice how I'm a, notice my, the space in my hand right here. and then shift up. Don't try to get up there like this, but actually just move your whole hand unit down. Just let it fall down there and then up to the seventh fret. And then here's your, here's your moment going from this bar, the fifth fret bar, to here. And so we're catching the sixth fret on the third string, and the little finger is on the eighth fret of the second string. So practice going back and forth there. And also practice getting into that. And just stop there and listen to the quality of that landing. And then the third finger, second finger stays on. So that's your line. Take the bass out if you'd like to, just to strip it down. And 
then again. So here, oh, all that was at 68, not 73. Now we're at 73. This is the same, and then move the bar over a string. So now you're barring the second and third strings on the fifth fret. And then we have the fourth string up here. Now, if you're glued like this, it's gonna be hard to get up there. So drop your hand down, give some nice space in the hand and let your little finger curve. And so you can play this with P, I, and M or thumb index middle. So we have, and then we were going like this and then in the last one, we came down to those notes. Now we're gonna use the open third string, but still that pinky on the eighth fret. That's a G note. Back to here. Now we'll slide down to the seven, five, three. Now we're at our D shape, right? It's like a D chord, but it's just those two, two notes with the D in the bass here. And then five, three, two. And then the two finger can move up here to the second fret. There's an A chord, but just these notes of it. So then that move is worth practicing just to get it nice and clean. Now, here's a temptation. When you are coming into a chord like this, the challenge lies in getting to that second fret down there, right? We're here and then we gotta kind of do this little shift thing. The melody note, however, is still on the first string. So you could just leave out that second fret and it would still be perfectly fine. It would still sound perfectly fine, but we wanna get there because it's nice to have that extra note in there. Here's the key is that it can't get in the way of that melody note. We still need to hear that melody note, the open string. So make a nice tunnel, get that second finger out of the way. And make sure that if something has to go, it's not the melody note and it's the accompaniment note, the two finger. And then that brings us to our repeat of this first section in our D shape again. And then this outro, we can just look at it here. It's just your D chord. You can fade away if you'd like to, however you'd like to handle it. Right, so I promised that we would go back and take a look at that interlude that gets us from verse two into verse three. So let's do that now. This interlude is all on the G chord. So just the third finger down here and then the open strings. And we have this rhythm. One and a two and one and two and one and a two and. And just make that dance. Just play it for a few, just loop it and loop it until it just, you can just feel it and it's just this boom, 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 boom. It is a drum song, so just make that dance. And then if you can bring that mood of that into the rest of the piece, then how great is that? Because then the whole thing will dance. So with each of these, there's bound to be some little bitty spots in each of these sections that your fingers just are having a hard time with. Don't just blaze over those and keep playing the big section over and over and over again. That's not good practice and it's gonna take you forever to get it together. Instead, if you find a spot that is resisting polish, it's giving you fits, stop, zero in on it, ask what's going on here and what exactly do I need to do to make this work? Go slow, look at your hand positioning, look at the notes, what exactly does each finger need to do? Does the first finger need to go somewhere or the second? Like really understand 
every little corner of that tricky spot. And then once you've got that, then you can start looking for solutions. So whatever solution you find, then just remember every time you play it to be mindful and insert that solution at the spot and then do loop the little sections. All right, this has been Little Drummer Boy. It's such a wonderful tune. I hope that it brings you years of enjoyment, at least if you don't practice it all year round and play it all year round. At least you can pull it out in the cold months, in the Northern Hemisphere anyway, in the Christmas months, and enjoy it then. Again, if you would like to download this book of 30 pieces, of which this is one, then you can find that at the link below. It also has, as you can see here, the chords above the line that you can just strum it and just sing and the lyrics and everything else you need for a good Christmas holiday time. You just need to bring your own hot chocolate and candy canes and you'll be good to go. All right, thank you so much for watching. Best of luck in your practice. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.